QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 Accounts Payable Aging Reports. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown, selecting the open windows list. We're now going to be taking a look at accounts payable reports, including an accounts repayable aging report. When we think about any other type of report other than the major two financial statement reports, balance sheet and income statement, we want to think about them in relation to some line item, expanding in on providing more detailed information for some line item on the major financial statements, that being the balance sheet and or income statement. So I'm going to open up the balance sheet first, reports drop down, company and financial. Let's scroll on down to the balance sheet. Balance sheet. We're going to make this for the date of, and let's put a range up top, up top, customize the reports from 010121 to 022821. So it's our two month time period. I'm going to say, okay. And we're looking down here on the accounts payable. So the accounts payable is going to be down below. We have 648, not a whole lot going on in the accounts payable at this point in time. But that represents us owing somebody else money, typically for normal kind of business transactions. If we drill down on the accounts payable account, then we see it's going to be driven by a few specific type of transactions. The only account that has a whole bunch of transactions in it, a whole bunch of transaction type accounts would be cash. This one's going to be, you're going to know exactly what goes on with the accounts payable. It goes up with a bill. We're going to enter a bill and then we pay the bill and then it goes back down. So that's going to be the, the normal process. When we think about the accounts payable, however, I need to know more than just that. I need to know more than just on the general ledger. That's not enough because I need to know how much is owed to whom. Who do we owe? <laughs> you know, so we owe somebody $648. Who do we owe? And so we want us to line up who it is that we owe. That's going to take a subsidiary ledger listing this out by vendor. And then we also want to know how past due is it? When is it due? Typically with accounts payable, we're going to try to pay at the end of the process for most companies because that's going to be common cash management strategy. You try to hold on to the cash as long as possible. So let's close this back out then. And we're going to open up the payable reports then. So I'm going to go to the report center. You can then go down to the vendors and payables uh, and find your accounts payable reports here. Or you can go to the reports drop down and go to the report center, which we'll practice doing at this time. And then report center, I'm going to maximize the report center over here. We're over in the standard tab, standard tab. We're looking for vendors and payables. That's the one we want, vendors and payables. And we have our most common reports up top the vendor payable aging and uh, the detailed report. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to open up the AP aging summary report, AP aging summary, changing the date to 022821. Notice there's only one date up top because this is like the balance sheet, a report that's as of a point in time, not a whole lot going on here because we don't have a whole lot of accounts payable outstanding, but similar layout to what we saw in the accounts receivable aging it's going to be breaking out our, our information, our payable, what we owe now by both vendor. So we have the vendor on the left-hand side, and then we have the information regarding how old these items are. So then we can kind of look at how past due the items are. So if this same terminology you'll see on the bill that you saw on the invoice, which was net 30 or net 15 or something like that, tells us when the bill is going to be due. So in other words, when we enter the bill into the system if i go back to the home page entering a bill we set the terms of the bill and or set the due date of the bill and one way to do that is to set the terms which means it would be due in 15 days or so or else you just say the bill due date and then that will help us then to figure out the aging to see when something is going to be due and then group it into our categorizations for either current items past due items and then how past due those items will be so that's our standard aging report. If you're a small company, you might not have a whole lot going on in the aging report. You might, you know, you might pay everything basically when it comes due and you'll, you'll be okay there. If, you're a lar if there's a large company, then this could be a substantial job with a whole department in it managing the payables that are there. And again, from a cash management standpoint, trying to pay basically as late as possible as the general rule <laughs> for the cash management strategy. Let's go back to the reports. Now, you can also see this in a detailed format. So if I run the uh, AP aging detail, and I'm going to change this to 022821. So now, now we have the same kind of layout up top, but it's going to break out whether it's current, 
or or uh, pass due in this format and that's the categorizations and then we can see the detail which of course is the actual bills once again not a whole lot going on of course but that's going to be the layout to it we have the 648 and that does match to what is on the balance sheet so that these reports always should be tying out to the balance sheet at the 648 so let's go back to the report center in the open windows those are going to be the major couple of reports you could make a graph on it as well you might want just the vendor balance summary this will be a similar report but now we're just we don't need the aging detail perhaps but just the summary detail so if i run this report changing the dates from 010121 to 022821 then once again we just have a list now and unlike the aging summary we don't have like how past due it is we just simply have the dollar amount so let's go back to the report center uh, we could have the vendor balance detail so if i run that report um, this is a useful report i'm going to say 010121 to 022821 so same information same bottom line but now we have the vendor information and we have the detail for the time period that we have given so now we can see the activity that has happened these balances still at zero but it's showing those it's showing us those vendors which had activity so even if it has a zero balance, we can see, okay, it went up with a bill and then the bill uh, was paid, right? We, we, we entered a bill and then we paid the bill. So then if I go back to the vendor center again, let's go to the report center. That's going to be the, the vendor balance detail report, uh, unpaid bills detail reports. It's going to be just another way to see basically the similar information. Oh, one, oh, let's say, oh, two, 28, two, one. So now we have the unpaid bill. So there's the bill just listing it out for the unpaid bill. Once again, lining up to that 648. So those are our major reports. Now, if I go back to the home page, if we go back to the home page, we can see that same kind of information managed in this pay bills oftentimes. So, so many times when people are working in the accounts payable, they'll be entering the bills and then they'll be managing the bills with the reports. And they may also use, of course, the pay bills feature to kind of sort the outstanding bills as well so this is another way you can you can sort and manage and get more detail on the information related to the line item on the balance sheet of accounts payable you can also go to the vendor center here or up top vendor center vendor center and you could sort of course by the vendors on the first line item and that'll give you the activity of what what's taking place on the right hand side so this is another common way to to go in and and uh discuss things with vendors or look into and research items for vendors. You can also go to the transaction side and oftentimes you'll be looking into uh, the bills that have been entered here. And so we can search the bills, we can say all bills and then just open bills. And that would be another way for us to search not by vendor, but instead by the bills, by those open bills.